I believe in the power of God. I'm a student of his power. I know what his power can do. I know what the power of God can do. I have seen it change lives. I have seen it shift climates. Listen, let me tell you this. If you're a man of God here, let me charge you by the message of God. Among the many things to contend for is genuine, authentic, spiritual power. Again, genuine, authentic, spiritual power. People have real needs. Sicknesses are not a mirage. There are people who sit and they are laughing whereas they are dying. The doctors have told them you will not survive. It's as simple as that. Do you believe this? Yeah. I believe, Pastor Sam, that before Christ returns, and I've seen this many times in my vision, there will be a revival of the healing ministry again. In a way, I know that here and there we have seen it, but it's still within the realm of argument. There is a level of the manifestation of the power of God that is going to be imported to the body of Christ by the message of God that people will demonstrate that ability of the spirit in a way that has not been seen before. I believe this with all my heart. And perhaps someone came to church this morning and God brought you to remind you that that dream you saw five years ago about you stepping into that healing ministry is not a lie. Five years may have gone down the line, but you are in the house of God where God reminds you of his promises and that your covenant with him to be a carrier, a transmuter of his power to the nations, that covenant is still valid. Do you believe this? I believe the power of God. I truly believe that if I preach without the power of God, I'm wasting the time of God's people. Absolutely wasting their time. There is the spirit component to our speakings. What you are receiving is beyond enlightenment. No. What you are receiving is beyond knowledge, is beyond education. Beyond the frailty of the words you are hearing, there is a spirit transaction happening to you. It is that quickening that empowers you to become what is being taught, become what is being said, and the spirit entered into me. The spirit entered into me. The spirit entered into me. I feel stirred up in my spirit before we go to the last point to just speak. I believe that there's somebody in this place, truly, and I'm saying this by the Spirit, I believe that there is somebody in this place, it's time for you to get into this business of the anointing with the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen, listen. This business of power has been abused. It has been a reason for pride, unfortunately. But you see, there are still men and women that God is searching for. And God is saying, I want to trust. Maraskia. I tell you, I just sense, just like a flow, the anointing of God's power. God is still searching for men. He's still searching for women. Man of God, rise up. This level is too low. You can't serve his purposes that way. No. It's time to quit the realm of arguments and explanations and step into a dimension of authentic spiritual power. That includes women. That includes men. That includes women. That includes men. Let me stretch my hands over someone. Let capacity, grace, I'm praying for you now. Capacity. Where is the man of God in need of power? Let grace rest upon you. Let grace rest upon you. Be strengthened within your inner man. Listen. Don't be a weak Christian. You will not be a blessing that way. You need power with God. 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 Am I wasting your time? Power with God. Power with God. Power. It takes power to see. It takes power to hear. It takes power to discern. 
it takes power to stand it takes power to remain it takes power to defend the name of the Lord say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves submit themselves submit themselves submit themselves submit themselves situations and circumstances will not bow just because you are tired of them they will bow at the instance of power you cannot build a church just by sentiments and intelligent discussions it takes the power of the holy ghost how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and it says the holy ghost shall overshadow you the power of the highest of the highest pray in the spirit for one minute before we go to the fifth point pray generate power from within your spirit man it's time to be a man of power time to be a woman of power household of david pray pray shalisa Just do what I'm asking you to do. Something is happening to your spirit, man. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorify bring the Lord strengthen in your inner man just take a moment to pray this is why you came this morning you're not wasting your time weak ministry dies a weak destiny dies strengthen within your inner man hallelujah in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus power is the force that makes things happen power is the force that makes things happen when there is no power there is no movement there is no motion there is no progress there is no advancement there is no increment power is the force responsible for anything that moves in the spirit and in your destiny 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 I'm seeing a number nine 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 there is an anointing that is coming on nine people this is what I'm seeing. We just spoke about power. 
in the name of Jesus I pray it is grace that comes for various reasons and for various purposes but I stretch my hands right now let that grace rest upon you let that grace rest upon you let that grace rest upon you rest upon Deborah rest upon Esther rest upon Gideon rest upon Elijah listen please listen to me I don't know if I taught it here in this church but I remember telling you that every name you see in the Bible is not just the name of an individual that the names you see in the Bible are spiritual pathways that produce a certain kind of believer so when you say Abraham Abraham is not just the name of a man Abraham is the name given to a spiritual pathway that if followed will produce a certain kind of man that woman wearing a red hair tie I'm seeing fire rest on her help her please oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me spirit of wisdom rest on me let your power holy ghost power rest on me rest on me let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me holy ghost power rest on me one of the ways you know that God is the one training you is that you must find a parallel to your training in scripture it doesn't matter what you are becoming you must find an expression to your training so when you begin your walk with the spirit eventually you will see Esther forming eventually you will see Elijah forming eventually you will see Peter forming if you cannot find your parallel in scripture it is not the spirit of God training you because his patterns are consistent I'm showing you the benefit of coming to the house of God that in experiencing the power of God is to the end that you be formed that you can see the mold you are assuming in the spirit so you know that I just be, I began as a prayer warrior just with a passion for prayer but as you sojourn and as you dwell in the house of God you will begin to find your expression in scripture I'm looking like Anna the prophetess I'm looking like Elijah I am looking like Daniel what is this combination of prayer and leadership what is this combination of prayer and governmental authority why am I a man of prayer and yet I have an unusual access to systems and structures that is Daniel forming you will always find your formation in scripture let me give you the last one so we'll pray Let me give you the last one so we pray. Be seated for a minute, please. The house of God must be a house of prayer for all nations, must be a place of revelation, understanding, and transformation, must be a place where men access help and strength from God, must be a place where men experience the power and the glory of God. The final requirement according to scripture for any place and any gathering of God's people to be called the house of God is that it must be a place where men can experience the love of Jesus in a practical way. The love of Jesus in a practical way. James 1.27 the love of Jesus in a practical way. James chapter 1, please, and verse 27. James 1, 27. Here's what it says. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, 
to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. This dimension of God's love and kindness must be captured in any gathering of God's people for that place to be called the house of God. In Acts chapter 4 from verse 34, I believe, there is an apostolic model that is given to us. Please give us Acts chapter 4, 35, 34 and 35. Yes, thank you. It says, neither was there any among them that lacked. Please look up. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prizes of the things that were sold. Verse 35 and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution. This is really the point. Now we don't have to do it the way they did it those days to go and sell your land and houses. The idea is that distribution was made unto every man according as he had the need. Now the church is not supposed to solve everybody's financial problem. It's not supposed to endorse carelessness. But there must be a dimension of God's love and mercy this is a house of mercy. And it's impossible to capture the word mercy without the word give. Are we together? A merciful person must be a giver. The Bible tells us that mercy is a seed. If you show mercy, you will receive mercy. I know with all due respect, great assemblies, who do well, preach well, but when it has to do with the ministry of mercy. And I think sometimes we men and women of God, we make these mistakes. We become very thoughtless over the needs of the people. And our focus is just to build church. And I'm saying this because I'm speaking to the body of Christ. It matters that we pastor God's people with the heart the Bible says, and David shepherded them with the integrity of his heart and with the skillfulness of his hands. When it has to do with your heart, you must have a heart that is thoughtful. Hallelujah. I have learned in leadership that people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Learn from Jesus. Jesus is done preaching in a very powerful crusade great miracles and he looked upon the people and he was moved with compassion and he said you know what let these people sit down they will have to eat before they go they said jesus don't get us into trouble here there are about five thousand men aside women and children where are we going to get the supplies and he insisted until the people were fed doesn't mean direct feeding the idea is that there must be a component in church that ministers to the needs of people. You see, faith is gradual. Faith is a process. Are we together? God works miracles. He gives speed, but he's not a magician. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. I prayed to God many years ago, and it's still my prayer up until today, that God will grant me compassion, that I don't just want to be a powerful man of God, I also want to be a compassionate man of God. That lion and lamb must be captured in your life. If you are a lamb alone, they will kill you. If you are a lion alone, you will kill every lamb. You need to be both lion and lamb. A lion that is a lamb will not kill a lamb, even though he's a lion. Because he knows what it means to be a lamb. A lamb that is also a lion will respect the strength of the lion and not take the lion for granted knowing that it has capacity to kill it you need to be both lion and lamb when you are lamb alone you become a victim eternally when you are a lion alone you will victimize people without knowing that lion and lamb dimension is important are we together now yes so i don't want to be the man of god walking miracles doing great things and then i have a most active and faithful member having to trek home and not even knowing how he gets home doesn't matter whether his family dies doesn't matter whether his family eats no it matters did you hear what i said it matters i'm praying that god will raise people from within this church 
aside from the compassionate assignment of the church that God will raise people who will reflect the benevolence of the kingdom people who are raised are we together have you heard about a woman in the Bible called Dorcas did you ever read about Dorcas expressions of love in terms of welfare and hospitality is a major component is a major factor that makes a place to be called church compassion expressed in love and care and giving I have trained my people that no matter how large the ministry is at least at a workforce level nobody should be sick and down and depressed without me not knowing within 48 hours it doesn't matter where that is the power of systems and structures people don't care what you know I repeat to you again until they know that you care hallelujah and I thank God for a very visionary church like this and I hope that this becomes a model for many people care about the people who serve are we together now yes I remember one time a dear son in the gospel they were returning pastor from a, a crusade and these guys just surrounded them and kidnapped like six people and I was doing something when I was called and they said this is what has happened and you know he was so broken and he said they had kidnapped my people I said my God from where again from a crusade coming and you know they, you know how these people behave like mad people they just give all kinds of ungodly amounts bring this before this time otherwise and they will do it truly because their hearts have been seared they, are, they don't have a conscience and I sat down I thought to myself I said but these faithful people they risk their lives to go and stand by this man of God and they preach the gospel saved souls on their way going it was not a making of theirs the Bible says withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power and don't delay someone can die and I thought about it it was it was a very huge amount and we tried to you know make calls see what we could do but at the end of it I said no there are mothers there with children there are people there I should not waste the destiny of a family when it is within your power I said whatever it is within our power glory be to God the long and short is that they were able to come out of that place and to me of course you will feel the pain of such an amount leaving you but the consolation is it validates the fact that truly you have demonstrated to people that it is profitable to be planted in the house of God there are people today who only got admission because they came to church there are people who got jobs because they came to church listen we need to rewrite that narrative that makes church look like a nuisance to society a nuisance to civilization are we together now the church is not all about collecting money from people unfortunately wrong narratives that are sold around the church is a place of tremendous blessing tremendous blessing tremendous blessing tremendous blessing sometimes humility too must be guided because it is it is unguided humility that does not let the world see how much the church is doing you know in a bit to want to really cover a lot of things the only thing sadly that they see is when the offerings are being collected but they do not see the lives that are being changed so it's good to be humble but where the world must know what the church is doing we must let it know let's let's make it known and without any sense of prejudice hallelujah are we learning the house of God the household of David if this place must be and remain the house of God these are the things that must happen that you must be a people of prayer you must be a people of word help must be found in all its ramifications you must be exposed to the power of the Holy Spirit and finally that the love of Jesus must be distributed not just from pastor to the people but among yourselves imagine that you are done with service even though I know that society unfortunately has become a very harsh place even to provide help you can provide help and pay for it but then it's better to take the risk loving Jesus anyway 
that after service you can see someone and say can i give you a lift somewhere and the person says wow i came to household of david and for that person it's not about the lift it's about the thoughtfulness a reflection of the pastor's ideology which is a reflection of god's thinking and that person will go and bring 10 more people like the woman at the well remember said come see a man every time people see good things they don't keep quiet let me tell you they will always invite someone even if it's their loved one the benevolence of the saints is important it translates to growth and increase when people experience love in addition to power and word they will be glad to call everyone to say you know what i found a home not just a place to visit i found a home so our little children back home once service is done i usually before i attend to anybody as many of them they line up they hug me and give me letters before i start counseling even if i'm not going to counsel that day I must spend time with the children. So once we're about sharing the grace, you see all, that's their own koinonia service. Of course, they pray, do their thing, but once the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are happy and nobody would dare stop them. No, they are more important to me than anybody. It doesn't matter whether it's the president of any nation because adults, their future has been known, but the children... <laughs> hallelujah and let me tell you before we pray what i began to observe because of course the children come from various families with various um you know levels of exposure initially when i started this some of the children you could see that they didn't believe they belonged but they noticed that the same generous hug the same everything the ones who can speak english or the cannot well dressed or otherwise and it began to change they started making friends among themselves they were happy they noticed others were writing me letter they will write everything wrong english draw love I, I will receive it just you bring it for me and i found out the other people started writing it too it started building the confidence of the ones who felt they were outcasts and they would now join the queue and sometimes i will insist that the welfare should get a package for them and i will be the one to hand it myself Sometimes you see all of them coming, say, okay, I should bring my ears. They just wrote, uh, come on entrance. I say, you mean it? Did you pass? <laughs> you see, many of you would have been better if that's how you were raised. <laughs> look, at, look at the recovery you are having to go through right now as an adult. For some of you, the first person who said, I love you, was the most dangerous person who came to your life. <laughs> My time is exhausted. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest. Hallelujah. I have about nine more minutes let me split that time to two we're going to spend the first four minutes praying for household of david do you love this church do you love your pastor you want to see god in fact is it all right if we take let me split it into three i've changed my mind one minute for quality thanksgiving not singing praying the thanksgiving many of you like singing and it's good but you are going to pray you turn the thanksgiving to prayer are we together in the next one minute i don't whether you want to go on your knees you're going to say father thank you this is the lord's doing this is the lord's doing this is the lord's doing father we honor you thank you you are the builder of the church the restorer thank you for what you have done for household of david it is of the lord's mercy that your work in this house has not been consumed it is because your compassions they fail not thank you for pastor shola thank you for his dear wife pastor abigail thank you for the leadership thank you for their loyalty 
thank you because in spite of the shifts in venue the commitment and the love of your people remained intact someone thank him thank him give him quality thanks for his faithfulness lay it to hearts to say thank you 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 hallelujah hallelujah now i want us to pray for household of david now and even in the future whether you are standing or kneeling it doesn't really matter you are going to pray and say father let the word of god never fall let there never be a time on this pulpit where it will just be carnality that will be marketed let the fire on this altar remain let the power of prayer remain let the soundness of doctrine remain someone who loves household of david pray someone who loves god's servant pray someone who loves the leadership pray lord raise quality men as sons and daughters within this house raise teaching priests raise apostles raise prophets raise evangelists Add daily, O oh God, as many who should be saved. Bring daily, O oh God, as many as should be transformed, as should be healed, as should be delivered. Bring the young, bring the old, and turn them into objects of praise, signs and wonders. Give this church the gift of faithful men loyal people sons and daughters let doctrine not be scarce let your word not be scarce let your power not be scarce let character not be scarce let integrity not be scarce let godliness not be scarce In Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray now I'm going to give you the next few minutes I'd like you to cry if it is true that your body is a temple of the Lord Jesus Christ anything that does not look like God I'm releasing my faith with you go ahead and pray before I speak over your life if it's sickness it must leave me now if it's shame and reproach it must leave me now in the name of Jesus when jesus entered the temple listen 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 when jesus entered the temple the first set of people he drove were thieves that means when god comes into a life he's looking for anything that steals to drive it out the same way he drove the money changers the ones merchandising god's temple satan is merchandising people's bodies merchandising their destinies i'd like you to open your mouth in the next one minute please cry as i release my faith to speak over you that situation has to change please pray don't keep quiet what you tolerate will never change you came here this morning crying for mercy Pray over your health. Pray over your family. Pray over the work God has given you. Pray over your job or your need for one. Pray over your home or your need for one. Pray over your children or your need for one. Pray over your finances. Pray over increase. That God will multiply you. You will not be small. He will not be few. He will glorify you. You will not be small. Someone is praying. God answers prayers. Take the next one minute to cry. It says be anxious for nothing. But in everything. By prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. 
let your request be made known unto God Lord I have cried wipe my tears by your mercy my children have cried send me help from your sanctuary send me financial help by wisdom send me the gift of man turn my mourning to dancing my sorrow to joy give me a testimony let there be a consolation to my loving you a consolation to my serving you a consolation to my living for you go ahead and pray everyone that asked receive it everyone that asked receive it hallelujah 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 do you believe in the power of prophecy I have watched my life and I have watched the life of many people change because of the creative power of the prophetic word that when God's word comes genuinely from him it is able to shift the climate over a man's life and bring that man into a dimension of grace that perhaps he was not even prepared for I want to stand in faith with the man of God and every man of God in this place to speak over our lives and I want you to receive it believe it that at the back of these frail speakings there is a grace that empowers that word and insists that it does not fall hallelujah as I sat back there and watched the video of your new site given to you by God my excitement was not just for the site alone but my prayer was that that kind of result of establishment that it will be reproduced in everybody's life are we together that the same way the church by the power of God you know by God's grace like pastor said um, I think I've been on this journey with this church for about eight years so I've had the honor of seeing the transitions right from your former place to where you are now and look where God is taking you to you see it's impossible listen it's impossible to be part of what is working and then your life too now pegs I pray for you whatever has stagnated you not allowing you to move not allowing you to experience testimonies I come in the name of Jesus the son of the living God here's my prophetic word for you go forward go forward go forward go forward advance make progress I place grace upon your life go forward I say it again go forward go forward in every area of your life let the chains break let the limitations break go forward in the name of Jesus hear me God is a God of portions do you know what that means the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all that even the king is fed by that which the field delivers that means for everyone there is a space physical land space but also space where your relevance should not be fought the Bible says watch this now that the nation of Israel you see that they found a place they dug a well the Philistines came and covered it remember the story they dug it again and these people will not allow them they still came and harassed them once you are not in your place you will be a victim but the Bible says they dug the third one 
and they were left alone they called it Rehoboth they said God has given us our own space I don't know whose space you are still contending with but may my God take you to your own space your own financial space ministerial space marital space I say it again financial space territorial space where your land is in Lagos we dispossess any giant and we decree and declare may my God establish you there in the name of Jesus you see my time is up but I want you to take this particularly for the men there is a dimension of faith that is expressed in land land has always been a token that validates the presence of faith and covenant with God every time a man walks with God in a certain way and God begins to swear a blessing upon you there is a token that is represented do you know why because the earth you see is beyond the space of occupation is a witness is one of the three witnesses upon the earth hallelujah it's important for you to know that the earth is a universal point of contact the earth is a universal point of contact and when i say earth i don't just mean land the earth and all its elements together that means it is in God's mind that eventually you find a space. This was what Laban refused to allow Jacob have. He kept tipping Jacob and Jacob said, no, I was trained by my father that God is a God of portions. I've gotten to a point where I need to establish my own family and have my own covenant with God. And Laban said, no, if this man leaves, he consulted by divination and found out that the reason why he prospered was because the man was there. Whatever has tied you down that is stopping you from going forward. Your life is not at the frequency of maximum utility simply because there are Labans. Labans may not mean men. Labans can mean systems. I prophesy unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, be released now. Be released to find your space. Be released to find your place. I say it again. Be released to find your space. Be released to find your place. And for every worker, I'm praying for everybody, but please allow me pray for the workers. Every worker, faithful laborer, genuine son and daughter connected to this grace. In all your expressions, not just within Nigeria here, the UK as we saw, and every other expression. Everyone who has labored in prayer, in giving, in word and doctrine, particularly when this church was you know the building was gutted by fire i was so touched in my heart as we spoke with pastor shola and he told me the faithfulness of the workers and the membership in all the transitions when covid happened there are people who just because the church was locked for three months the pastors almost plunged to depression because when the church was opened there were no members again the people said this has, has always been an opportunity for us to run away now that covid has come after three months we're gone it takes grace to retain all oh. the bible says strong men retain wealth retainership is a product of strength not just wisdom it takes wisdom to gather but it takes strength strength only as by god let me speak a blessing upon you for every faithful worker tirelessly walking serving God and serving this grace convenient or otherwise for every faithful member loving Jesus adhering being loyal to the faith submitting to the apostles doctrine I pray for you may my God turn you into a sign and a wonder may my God turn you into a sign and a wonder may my God turn you into a sign and a wonder may my god turn you to a sign and a wonder in the name of jesus christ you will never lack help in your life receive it as a prophetic word you will never lack help in your life 
men will arise to help you arise to defend you arise to protect you arise to support you arise to give to you arise to partner with your vision arise to wipe your tears arise to carry you in the name of jesus for this that you have done let a memorial be built for you in the spirit that your children and your children's children will benefit from in jesus name we pray now i saw while i was seated that a call was made to give let me just lend my voice i didn't discuss this with pastor but let me lend my voice with everyone who might be following online and for us here it is a good thing to give god's method has always been men his method of making his work come to pass financially speaking is men and let me challenge everyone be part of this while i sat there i already knew that in my own way I will be part of this i will never never teach what i don't believe i'm not raising an offering i'm just lending my voice to challenge you we have come into a dimension of responsible christian practice where we have the practice of the faith must be void of manipulation believers are matured enough to love god and understand his program there's no point coming to hype and um, cajole or do any of such things it shouldn't be we are matured believers who love God. Are we together? God's method has always been his word and then through the ministry of men. So let me encourage all those who love this beautiful church family to be part of this building project. I understand that a significant deposit has been made. It is within the power of God through the willing hearts of believers. And you may not necessarily be part of you know the church family per se part of the household of david but you're just a believer who loves jesus and loves his program and you're inspired by the spirit to support the work please go ahead and do that to the glory of his name the most important thing is that god's kingdom advances god's program continues it will be a joy to one day watch the dedication of this building and celebrate what god is doing you are clapping as if you will not be alive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Pastor, thank you again for this morning. And thank your lovely wife, household of David. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name.